You're listening to Hayes Radio Network, Cannabis Lifestyle Radio. You're listening to CNT Law Media, and we're here with Cindy Tran. How are you today, Cindy? I am fine. Thank you very much for asking. It's, uh, it's good having you in. How's it feel with everything going on with COVID? You know, it's good to leave the house once in a while. <laughs> right? Okay. You know, it's a lot of fun to leave the house if you can get out. How do you feel about everybody that's um, going, you know, just completely going out and just not even almost pretending like it's fake? Or have you felt like some people almost feel like it's not even real anymore? You know, I think everyone's just getting a little tired of staying at home and just need to step out even my sweet little puppy opie needs to leave the house once in a while so he's already gone to the office twice this week (laughs) but um generally speaking i think uh, people are older and smarter and they know what they're doing so let them be responsible they want to go out let them go out and protect themselves you can only stay home for so long i wish i had a puppies but just like us they need they need to go out they need to explore so as much as you can even if they're like home dogs to see the outside my puppy's a stay at home dog dog. now i've realized something though Mm. he is actually tired of us being home all day long (laughs) (laughs) yeah they're not used to having you there yeah (laughs) he doesn't get his alone time and then he also has not been able to go out because we're home all day long he stays home with us yeah Usually when we didn't have to stay home, when we get home, the first thing we do is take him out for a walk. Mm. We're kind of lazy about that. <laughs> what is it? Have you heard about that they said something about pets can contract Corona? I heard. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So which is why our little puppy is so confined. I mean, he's so spoiled. He has this huge backyard. He's a tiny little 10 pound poodle. Oh, okay. Runs around the backyard. And he gets all that. But you know, it's our backyard. So no other dogs are there. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's not allowed to walk the neighborhood right now because of pets getting sick. I don't know. Yeah. How oh, did they even say it? They actually put something out saying, hey, don't even bring your pets out and stuff or what or no? Oh, no, no, no. Or you're just kind of worried about. Yeah. Well, we're psycho parents. <laughs> I got you. Being more I cautious. <laughs> it's good it's to be cautious inside. <laughs> it's yep, always yep, yep. to be. Um, <laughs> so everybody's kind of wondering a little bit about uh, when when did you get into law and, you know, what made you want to start the law group that you have? So first of all, just so everyone knows, CNT Law Group, if you haven't figured it out, is actually my initials, yep. Cindy Tran. Um, I will yep. not disclose what the middle name is uh, you can you, you can assume it's nancy if you want <laughs> okay okay i got so, you uh, but it it i've been practicing since uh 2003 so i've been around for a for, for, for oh my a gosh forever <laughs> it's and scary how you think back when you first started law school and then you you think back like that was over 20 years ago yeah. I'm what, what were what were some of the first cases you actually worked on when you got out what was like the first one i was like oh this is mine i did this like you know what i mean do you remember i do remember and you know what everyone thinks being a lawyer is so glamorous mm. and when you're in law school you're thinking when you get out you're gonna hit that first big case and everything and I did. I get to work on huge cases, but you know what? My name was nowhere on any mm, of the paperwork. The paperwork. Sure. For like the first seven years, I yeah. was that attorney in the, you know, in the background doing everything, yeah. but my name wasn't on there. There were much bigger attorneys with more recognized name. So um, I was. My name's not on there, but I did. What get was to work the first case? What was the first one about, though? A little bit. Can you give a little preempting of what it was? I can. I worked with a law firm that did um, a lot of intellectual property. So my first case was, and this is this is a firm that I also interned with during law school. So it was kind of funny, but um, their biggest client and uh, is Perfect Ten magazine. And I don't know if a lot of people even remember what Perfect Ten is. I think they still exist right now, but it was a uh, men's connoisseur <laughs> men's magazine oh wow so, yeah. mm. uh, it wow. was, uh, it and was the, interesting and they got sued over something or they were suing or they were suing to protect their copyrights okay so wow. we went up against companies like google oh wow uh, and, yeah. and what claim would they have against google then well um one of the biggest things google search engines um we had a lot of websites that were stealing their content Mm. um, and then they would have the Google search engines would be able to lead you to those websites and so 
when you're when you're a copyright holder, one of the worst things you can have is trying to sue a website because they'll disappear. Yeah. Oh they yeah. Just, so yeah, quickly. Oh right? yeah. So oh, our wow. yeah, our firm decided that uh, my boss, brilliant man, um, Jeff Mausner, decided that you know what, instead of going after the actual guys, we name them, but we have to go after someone that's a little bigger that can't run away. Mm. So. People like Microsoft, uh, people or entities like Microsoft, sure. and Google, um, or even the um, the the what was it, what were they called? Um, the processing companies that process the membership fees. Uh, oh right? yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Because yeah. Uh-huh, all of these uh-huh. all of these websites have members, yeah. and, but they don't pay for their content. They stole the content from our client, and then they charge someone a membership fee. To view to it. To access and exactly. view it. Wow. So we went after all of those guys that were facilitating these, the bigger okay. companies like Google with the search engines and that. Um, it was one of the landmark decisions, Perfect Ten versus Google. And I was very lucky to have a chance to work on that from very early on. Yeah. Um, so that's where I got a lot of my trademark experiences, litigation, uh, federal court stuff. But again, You'll never find my name on it because yeah. sure. I was one of the but, sure. but you still gain something. So even from the, the experience and things that you got from those few cases, you it traveled with you in the new cases that you did have your name on. So it, one right? of my philosophies about life is there's never any regret mm. because you will always walk away learning something. something. Definitely. Right? Even if you felt like you were working you were the hardest working one there and all of that and you weren't getting recognized, you were still learning, whether mm-hmm. they taught you or you learned it from just watching. Yeah. Right. Because without all of those experience, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing now. No, exactly. We all have to pay our dues and learn something. Mm-hmm. There's a learning process. And the important part is someone allowed you to do that. Yeah. And so I'm very grateful to those early attorneys who took me on mm-hmm. um, and taught me everything that I learned. And now I'm able to do more on my own now mm-hmm. than I was. Yeah. yeah See, that's the thing. You get to, even though there's the saying of doing the grunt, yeah. the grunt work, right? Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. You got to learn that grunt, especially if you're going to have your own firm. Like, well, let's let's be realistic. Definitely. Now, you don't, I guess it's not as necessary if you decide to, where a lot of lawyers feel comfortable of being at one place almost their whole life with an aspiration of maybe becoming a partner or a higher leveled sub-partner or something of that nature mm-hmm. and having interns under them and this and all that stuff. But then they're not worrying about the expenses and paying for the people and paying for that office and worrying about all that type of stuff because once you jump into that realm, it's whether and it's thing. your own entity, mm-hmm. right? Right. It's way different. It's way different. And when it's your own entity, you have not only the pride of what you're doing, you have the pride of responding to the clients. These clients are now really you answer to them, mm-hmm. right? And you need to make sure that you're doing everything that's best for them. So one of the things early on, being an attorney in a law firm that did a lot of heavy litigations, like these perfect 10 cases that I learned from, I mean, our clients our clients spent tons of money on these lawsuits. You know, sure. We've got two, three law firms representing them. Yeah. And win or lose at the end of the day, which our client mostly did fairly well. Mm-hmm. But win or lose, the attorney's the one who's making the money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not... Not, Not the, the client. client. Yeah, right. yeah. And, but they've got all the stress of it all. And while I do believe our firm did an amazing job and we, you know, we earned every penny that we earned, charged like back we got, then. Yeah. But I still really do believe that after do, going through all that, I realized there was a lot of things that we could have done earlier on mm. that would have made this whole litigation process a lot smoother yeah um sure. but of course when you're dealing with copyright infringement that's just there's no smooth way of doing that because people were out to steal your product so and that's the, a whole different and thing it's yeah. different than like a murder case like you know like <laughs> copyright infringement someone's made their mark designed it registered this and that for the most part isn't it relatively black and white to prove if someone infringed or now no. no, right? No. You have to be. It has you have to, to go, there's a lot of like fine tuning in between of what they could change or what they took from from you. How they use like it, um, but yeah. of course, with Perfect Ten, it was a lot different because th- literally the infringers were taking their photos mm-hmm. 
and putting on a celebrity's face on it. Photoshop. Oh, uh, I mean, that's some gangster okay. fucking faking that, out. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, we a, had some. Out. <laughs> <laughs> we had some amazing law clerks um, at the firm because we also did their copyright registrations for them. So we would get the the magazines beforehand mm-hmm. and do the registration. So it was one of the few firms that you can walk in and see the receptionist flipping through. A magazine, magazine. <laughs> like yeah. that. Uh, okay, it's one of those. <laughs> but you know what? The important part is everyone took pride in the job. Yeah. And so our staff actually, in looking at those magazines, when we were looking at infringing material, they could name the issue, the page number that photo came from because they were so familiar with the client's okay. product. Yeah. Um, because once it's online and they change the face of the person or they change some things mm-hmm. of the photo, how do you? Then you have to compare, right? Yeah. And, and when then, you're looking and at And the question is, is how much past the altercation is it considered an original work? That That's too. there's a there's a really arcane way of looking at that through the law. Um, mm-hmm. There is no red line version of that. You can't you can't just draw a line and send in. Once you cross this, it is no longer infringement. It's, but is it something like twenty five percent or this or has? I mean, is, is there a general to the layman? You want to know what that term is called? Tell me. Substantial. <laughs> <laughs> what okay. does a reasonable person say? So honestly, <laughs> the, the test that we look at is, can it still be recognized as the original work? Okay. If you can recognize the, it as being the original work still, then there's not enough authentication to it. Oh, but, okay. Okay. I got you. But you know, with copyright, there's still this issue of... There's one thing if you look at something, someone else's work and gain inspiration from it. Okay. And another thing from taking someone's work no, yeah, and making okay. changes to yeah, it. Yeah, okay. like plagiarizing now, and then if, paraphrasing, if, right? Well, exactly. I got a perfect example. Let's say you took a, a photograph, right? And you decide to heavily alter it. You know, like, you know, let's say if the shirt had eye, somebody was wearing a shirt and it had eyeballs on it, right? And it was just very 2D, but then someone was inspired by Salvador Dali and started making the eyeballs look all dripping and the whole thing looks like it's transforming and changing, but its original inspiration was based on that one cool piece, but also inspired by Dali and then also other elements brought into it and stuff like that and then truly becomes a creative work. Even though you could say, oh, I know that photograph, what happens in that situation? So that's where we talk about the creative process. And when we talk about this, I want to talk about a very good client of ours. I don't know. uh, Some of our listeners might know them. Um, His name is Dunkey. He does artwork for the cannabis. He does a lot of cannabis uh, artwork. And um, and, and it's oftentimes his work is based on already known things like Star Wars. Sure. But... They're tripping, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or satirical. You know? Right, or satirical. But however you, you the know. The good thing about, you know, the, the difference here is that he's not taking what you would say an existing photograph or a movie poster and then just enhancing it. He sees that, but he freehands. Yes. His, and that is yes. his interpretation. Yes. His expression yes. of it. Yes. It's yes. completely yes. different. Yes, exactly. Now, but if he had taken that movie poster and mm-hmm. drew over it i think we're gonna have a little problem sure right but if you just, can still tell on the background that it's the original right but if it's altered enough where it's unrecognizable it's then not well, even not even rec- no it could be recognizable it, yeah but creatively changed and inspired by some there, there's a reason why you took it and altered it okay yeah. like you can recognize yoda anywhere yeah but yoda being high is a different thing yeah right Makes sense. In this sense, okay. he's not even altering the original because he's taking an image of Yoda that he sees or in his head, and he freehands the drawing. Okay. So it's not like he's yeah, and know. then he adds a joint to it right. and makes him like look a little Looping. more trippier yeah. or Tri- his okay. eyes are wider <laughs> or whatever exactly. or whatever exactly. it is. He first got the that stance and position and whatever maybe from uh, pausing it on a TV or finding a JPEG on Google yeah. or whatever it is, you know? And with a lot of artistic people, they don't even have to do that. They saw it. And oh, just, and they and just do it. And yeah, they just do it. Yeah. I mean, you probably know some people that have been like that that I, can do that. Yeah, I know a few people, actually. I right. know a lot of, like, artists or even graphic designers that they'll 
um, see something anywhere. Them walking or even in their own homes. And they're like, oh. And then they're literally, you see their gears turning in their brains of them creating something from what they saw. But it's it's their own thing. It's their own thought process. Right. And so that's what we call the creative process. And it's their expression of it and mm-hmm. not just you know, taking someone else's expression and changing it up. Oh, enhancing it. That's not what we're talking about. Did you ever hear of the guy and it was a, it was probably, there's a good chance. I I wish I knew the name offhand. I'm going to be more prepared on on the next, on the (laughs) next episode. It was a guy who took Instagram photos and all he did was make like this weird added thing or alteration and then printed them in these big galleries and a big lawsuit happened over. Are you familiar with what I'm talking about? I am familiar with the, Case, with the with the case, or uh-huh. maybe even with the case, and the judge ruled that it was a creative art, and the people who posted that Instagram didn't have right to the new alteration of it, essentially to his portion. Yeah, to his portion of it, because that was his expression of it, yeah. and and you know, to a certain degree, that's what we're talking about. Where what is substantial infringement? How how substantial similarity, right? Mm. If you're taking something and you've completely given it a new expression Mm -hmm. then it's still substantially similar to the original work you can take the original work as your inspiration um but can we still recognize the original work from your your work and if we can then we have a problem if we can't you know or it's completely different it gives a even a different feel even if you even if you can how do they weigh damages then based on that oh that's not fun that's (laughs) that's <laughs> that's not fun that's, that's another longer that, process that's a, a lot a process in which the judge you have to convince the judge or a jury yeah. of um how damaged you are from them doing this mm. right how, and it, it takes in so many different levels uh, they recognize how recognizable it is how popular you are versus how popular the original artist was how much damage was to their goodwill their reputation mm. how much money they could have lost how much money you could have made it's a nightmare (laughs) and that's why you need to have legal advisors to talk to you about it before you do things like this because then we can say oh maybe not a good idea yeah (laughs) Yeah. so so what you're saying is the benefits of utilizing let's say your service is that if you are a creative artist or a business or a startup and you want to create a logo and you want to create a brand and you want to put yourself out there you might think like I was the one who only thought of that and just assume <laughs> that no one else has, right? Like and the then how many people miles. start up businesses and actually don't check? And then, you know, there is that like one out of 10, right? That's going to get Trademark. sued yeah. sco- or screwed by someone who really has it and figures out you just like didn't even figure it out, you know? The worst part that can happen when you start a business is you've planned you've taken months to plan out what you want to do you've you've come up with your name you've printed business cards you've printed things and you never went and have that name checked to see if someone else already has it registered Mm. and then and most people don't let's be realistic i mean how many people actually even think about it because they don't Mm -hmm. even think that they're going to get big enough to be recognizable. That's them them, you right? don't have yeah. to be big enough because you're eventually, once you have your business set up and everything and you decide you're going to do this and this is what you're going to call yourself, you're going to register with the Secretary of State to form your business entity. And as soon as you file that and there's someone else with that name already registered, guess what? Denied. Mm, okay. <laughs> sure. So this is the whole thing about having a lawyer versus, uh, or as an advisor and consultant versus a lawyer to fix your problem and then help you is someone to talk to you about things like it's this. Like preemptive. Beforehand. Yeah. So right, pe- right, people preemptive. always think about, oh, I gotta get a lawyer when I'm in trouble. Yeah, like after I'm in <laughs> after trouble. After I'm in innocent. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, not, you know, not like, oh, let me get a lawyer. Somebody I can to, talk to, to. I could even speak to to help me build my thing up and get it figured out first to avoid, yeah. A, the possibilities that happen. And, and then two, you're getting like good business advice from an attorney who's trying to really have their best interest right i mean right or what not, we're trying I mean, to do is basically we're on a lifelong mission to change people's idea of what lawyers are mm-hmm. we are not and you should not be using us um using attorneys and lawyers for basically to fix a problem obviously you know that's when you need us and when you yeah. have a problem that's when everyone yeah. thinks about us it's just but the same thing when you you get a heart attack and then you go and talk to a, <laughs> a cardiologist. <laughs> exactly. But 
our mission is to help you change that. Uh, the average person to uh, see a lawyer as someone more as a, an advisor and a consultant mm-hmm. where you can go and talk to them to find out if you should be doing this. Yeah. This is a good idea. What should I think about and stuff? So oftentimes when we get someone who wants to form a, a legal entity or something or whatnot, there comes like, I want to, I, I want to set up an LLC. Do you know what that is? <laughs> right? right? What is an LLC, what right? An LLC? Um, or something like that. So first thing I was like, why an LLC? Do you know there are other types of, well, like corporations, partnerships, mm-hmm. you know, sole proprietorships? What are you trying to do? Mm-hmm. Um, so it, the last thing you want to do is set up something and realize you never needed to do that. Yeah. Right? And you spend all that money on it. So and you're, um, and you're essentially, instead of it being where it's the, you know, when you're in trouble, your philosophy is more based around avoiding litigation, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah, avoid definitely. it before you get to that point of having, of needing me. Exactly, right? right? Okay. So we're all about educating the clients okay. uh, on what they can, cannot do, should, should not do, what, you know, all of that stuff. I mean, I spent a lot of time litigating cases uh, in my earlier years and I realized it's like, oh, it's... It's a stressful way to earn <laughs> money. <laughs> and, you know, when you become, and then when we, I transitioned to being the general counsel of a fashion company, I was like, oh, this is so much better because I can help them um, make the decisions beforehand mm-hmm. and really avoid this litigation and yeah. the cost of everything. And then now that I'm out and we have our own firm, it's so much more rewarding because we can help you uh, help you with your decisions yeah. right save you money on some things and if we really do our job really really well sometimes our clients will never know because they never get sued that part right yeah yeah <laughs> right but the, the just like it people right mm-hmm. you don't know the it guys exist until something goes wrong but if they do their job right nothing ever goes wrong yeah yeah the viruses come through and, <laughs> exactly. and, you're, and you and you have a, a little bit of a motto based on that right yeah, we do we and do. what is that um I use it a lot, but I get I get attorneys not happy with me when I use it. So it, it, our motto is transactions are constructive, mm. litigation is destructive. Oh, okay. Right, right? Yeah. Because litigation is just so stressful. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're the plaintiff or the defendant. It is just a very destructive process. Mm-hmm. It's an av- they call it for an adversarial system for some reason, right? Yeah. <laughs> there's some, there's that, yeah. It's there's just basically. You have litigation when adults, as children, when we have problems with each other and we we run to our parents and they mitigate for us. Mm-hmm. So as adults, your parents don't mitigate for you anymore. Mm-mm. So what do we do? We run to courts. courts. Sure. Mm-hmm. But it's the same thing. We're yeah. running to someone else, arguing about something, asking someone else to resolve our problem. Yeah. But if we can set up our transactions when we decide, mostly this is having to do with contracts and disputes, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But if you're setting up your transactions and you talk about all of the potential things that can go wrong, address it in the contract phase, mm-hmm. talk, negotiate, all the time. You're a foot ahead. You're mm-hmm. a foot ahead. So if you, oh, God forbid, you have to go to the, you know, the courts for it, there's a lot of terms that have already been negotiated mm-hmm. and settled. And then you have a lot less to argue about. Mm-hmm. A four-year litigation can maybe run only a year or two, depending on the court system and how busy they are. They are, yeah. Right? But that's the point i mean that's that's my point about litigation and transactions mm-hmm. everyone loves doing transactions because that's what's going to get you your money that's constructing that's that's building your business mm-hmm. um but if you have to go through litigation that takes a part of your business sure. one wrong lawsuit and you can be gone yeah right? now the one thing too is i think <clears throat> of course when you're litigating and things there's you know the hourly rates and lots of money gets racked up things like that um, you actually have um, for people that are, let's say, worried about being charged like so much money just to get certain advice. Do you have like packages, like of business startup packages or things that are just set at a set price? Yeah. So Pro-rated. someone can kind of create a, a learning experience and having that relationship Absolutely. with a lawyer. Absolutely. So like our, like I said, our firm, uh, we have a lifelong mission of helping people you know, understand attorneys. We want to be your advisors. We are going to... We're here to help you and we want to be here to grow with you and and move with you as you get bigger and expand and all of that. So there's no sense in us charging you crazy amounts of money just to talk to you, right? Um, It's more important that we feel it's more important that if you have an issue or if you even have an inkling of something, you're comfortable enough to call, email, and talk to us and let us help you figure it out first before you get 
into the process and get yourself into trouble or not, right? So our firm always has these, we want to be, we're looking for relationships, even though I say transactions are constructive, we're relationship based. Relationships are transactional. Exactly. We're a relationship based firm. So we want to be with our clients as they go. And so we always have some different ways of building that relationship in terms of how we bill our clients. And clients can retain us on a annual basis, semi-annual basis, oh, okay. or on flat fees. Sure, sure. And, you know, flat oh, fee wow. retainers, yeah. exactly. Oh, wow. And, and, you know, even though we get send you a bill every month that shows you all the hours that we're doing for everything, your flat fees cover that. That's so cool. it doesn't matter how wow. many hours it is. That's it's pretty just, cool. That's awesome. For new companies, it is That's it unbelievable. That's really, really good. Yeah. Right? Right. You don't have to worry about how many hours we're spending and you don't have to freak out about... Hey, Wait, should, should I, I call? call? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But but not even that. When you have that utilization, you know, it's nice to be able to have with a lawyer and be like, you know, be like, you're doing a business deal with someone. You should have and, us on speed dial. And then and then you have and then you're saying like, hey, listen, you know, I'd like to do this deal together, blah blah. blah. How about this? I'm gonna have my attorney just send you over a quick draft and let you know. And then if your attorney has any questions, we can just put something together real quick. Now, normally, that could cost thousands of dollars yeah. to just ask a lawyer to do that. But if you have your own package, mm-hmm. what happens, right? You yeah. can utilize that, and then you seem even more professional. Yeah, just having, the, you know what I mean? just having yeah. that there. Just like, oh, yeah, here, here's my lawyer. They, they, they can resolve that. And it's also somebody that knows the extremities of the law and what you can and cannot do. And we so. also know your business because exactly. we're always with you. There we right? go. And you don't have to be one of those huge firms that have, like, you know, big companies that have a firm on the side mm-hmm. already because it's the same thing. We do it in scale. What yeah. your needs are and what yeah. you need us to do for you. So I mean, you can actually, and, and the thing is, is that if you're a small company, there's a lot of things that let's say they could use, utilize with a lawyer, but it's not yeah. like they're getting sued right away or this, or there's anything too crazy. So the lawyer can concentrate on their best interests mm-hmm. without any like diversions of, of other things yeah. that you have to. Well, you right? know, here's another thing. I always say that you don't know what you don't know, mm. right? So if you're going into business and you think, you know, you're going to go and negotiate a contract with someone, one of the, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. don't know what you're negotiating, <laughs> one of the, right? You only think about the, the, the few issues that you think about, price, quantity, and delivery. Yeah. yeah. But then again, you know, when you have an attorney like someone like us, we don't like going to the negotiation table because that always changes the other side's view. And if you have a good rapport with the person that you're going to do business with, yeah. don't bring an attorney to the table. But that's why they're, we're advisors and consultants, consultants, right? You come to us first, let us know, hey, I'm going to, I think about doing, about doing this. this. So what do I do when we hear that? We're like, okay, so what are you doing? Um, you are thinking about pricing, you're thinking about quantity, and you're thinking about delivery. But have you thought about liability, indemnification, risk, right? The risk of, mm-hmm. are we talking about products? Who's going to buy the insurance? Who's going to make sure it gets delivered? Who's going to, you know, all of that. Yeah. And what we're talking about, what, any other things, what if they breach? Mm-hmm. Where where are we going with that? What yeah. if you pay and you don't get the delivery? You need to go to these negotiations with those to things pr- in mind. To protect, yeah. to protect yourself. To talk about it. Because if you didn't have that, right? You just go in, sign something. Oh, I got happy with it. And if they have they, somebody that and they have something that does, yeah, you know, and they're like, well, they're trying to jib you a little, well, you know, you, you know, and then, and then, oh, also, the worst thing you can do is you go to these meetings, you didn't ask for anything, the other side prepares the attorney, the contract, That's sends it to you, oh and, yeah, and then, and then, and then you, you just have to accept it because you don't even know what's good or, or better. A lot or of people will just sign it and then put them or read it, pretending like they <laughs> think they're a lawyer. Like, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I know oh, what this yeah. means. Oh, this sounds really good. Yeah, I'm just going to sign. Is this where I sign? I went up for you on that. The smarter <laughs> ones will then say, oh, I'm going to let my attorney look at this. You know what happens at that point? They look at it. We look at it and we're like, oh, Ooh, you know, this. you're missing a few things. Yeah. I, I would recommend this, 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 and this. Sure, sure. And then you go back and suddenly it's a lot harder because it's already written down. We mm-hmm. have this. I mm-hmm. thought we agreed to these things already. And now you want to change the terms on us. That's why you should go to the meeting with some of these things already in mind so that you talk about it the first meeting. Yeah. And you expand on it rather than leaving the meeting thinking you already have an agreement and then coming back and saying, well, my attorney wants to make changes. 
Mm-hmm. Which it means you're reneging mind. on but, it. But, Jesus, but what she's essentially saying is that if you already, like, knew everything pre but didn't, like, push the whole lawyer thing when you already did, you yeah. know what I mean? You walk in there and say, well, you know, let's talk about delivery, liability, and like, oh, liability, blah, 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 blah. And then they might say, well, did your attorney want it? They, 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 at that point, they might say, do you have somebody that wanted to write this up? or Because then, then it, back then it puts court. back on you, yeah. which you probably want to have anyway, right? Definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You do if you have a, an attorney or a law firm that's already on retainer. Wow. then you don't have to pay somebody out to draft that contract. Yeah, wow. that's what, yeah, exactly. That's where the money pick. Can, mm-hmm. I mean, it's the truth. It's like, but, but, but your philosophy and you've had clients for over a decade, right? Yeah. That you've helped manage businesses and stuff, or yes, definitely. Starting two thousand nine was when I started to be a um, general counsel to a fashion company, international fashion company. Oh, so wow. since then, I've kind of got this whole part of doing you know, the transaction being inside the business and seeing how the business is run and the things that we can do to help the business. I mean, it got to a point where there were no contracts that were signed or executed by the CEO without the legal department and myself looking at it first See, and approving good. it. Sure. I mean, that included employment issues if they wanted to fire someone. Mm-hmm. Wait, why do you want to fire them? What's going on? Have we done the procedures? Have we done the disciplinary mm-hmm. things? documentations all of that stuff cuz how many Can times how many times do, yeah how many times it does right well, 1 out of 10 mm-hmm. wrong termination or something someone's going like to just whip around just out of spite even if they did something wrong right and sue yeah and yeah. you know the law is not protecting the employer they protect the employee so mm-hmm. whether their claim has merit or not you may or may not end up having to pay out on their claim but you paid out on the attorney's fees that Mm-hmm. Right. So one of the things we want to do in, in advance of that is if you're going to fire someone, let's talk about the steps that we have to take before we actually do this, because you can nip it in the bud when you get an attorney letter from the other side, say, you, sure. you know, wrongful termination. And mm-hmm. you've got someone that says, uh, no, here's all the documentation as to why your guy got fired. Yeah. Um, then it doesn't lead to a lawsuit that well, you're already prepared for. You're exactly. Already- and, yeah. and let's say you do have a product intellectual property or any of those things a lot of times and again i'm not a lawyer ask, I ask, are I'll you sure that. are I'm you sure a, I'm a, I'm a, i know <laughs> is is um a lot of times the um i lost track i'm sorry i, I had like a, a brain blunder brain well um yeah, I forgot. I'm sorry. It's a long we, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it, it, ha- it happens. You're thinking yeah. about products. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember now. There Thank you, you so much. That was so great. <laughs> if, uh, if someone was defending their intellectual property and you had a lawyer on retainer, a lot of times when you first send the cease and desist letter and the strength of that letter... It does make a difference. It makes people say, you know what, even if they were doing it, you know, I think I'm going to fucking stop doing it right now. Yeah, you know, I might just I mean, take like, this down. Right? A lot of times, know, it just, that itself can... The cease and desist letters, you know, coming from an attorney, it usually comes with all sorts of legal jargon and, 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 <laughs> and we And we quote um, cases and everything as to why. Uh, versus when you send a letter to say say Google and say hey Stop. please mm-hmm. take this down someone's infringing my stuff can can you just can you know can you disable can you this website this yeah. right and they'll be like okay it's an it's a what we call a DMCA notice a Digital Millennium Copyright Act notice to take the or sure. commonly known as a takedown notice sure right? or when Amazon maybe takes something down of yours that you have the right and then some alternate person says you didn't and they don't even have the true proof I mean. That stuff happens all the time, right? It does. It does. And, and the difference between you responding and an attorney responding with, here's everything that tells you we have the rights, you know, it's a big difference. And I, it's funny, you think, of, you think about it, and I've got clients who are very eloquent mm. um, business people, right? Yeah. And they can go ahead and they would basically say the same things we say. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing, right? But they're putting it on their letterhead and they sometimes don't get a response. And then they tell us, yeah. can you send a letter? And the only difference between our letter and their letter is it's on our letterhead. And it says, please be advised that this firm has been retained by. And then everything else after that is basically what the client said. Yeah. And we get a response. Yeah. Yeah. It's it means just- they're willing to spend money. 
Mm-hmm. Exactly. Oh wait, they have somebody perception. backing them up. Yep. Yeah. The perception of yeah. it. So that that's basically what it is. But um, you know, CNT Law Group, that's what we do. We're gonna help change the perception how people yeah. look at you. Mm-hmm. Um, because obviously knowing that you have a law firm and attorneys at your disposal is much better than you trying to handle some of this on your own. And more importantly, it's, it's again, it's back to the advice and consulting, right? We're here to help you. We're here to give you information. We're here to protect you. And it's not just Cindy in the package. No, of course not. She has a team. A whole I know. Team. <laughs> she has a team. How many? Do you have like 30 employees or at oh, the. Oh, no. We Mar- sound like we have 30 employees. Oh, wow. yeah, right. Right. Which, is what, which is a great thing, too. Yeah. But um, no, we're not. We're actually a very small team, which okay. is why you can afford us. We have, we have two attorneys. Okay. Um, Two paralegals, one senior paralegal who's a law school graduate, which I'm hoping and praying that she will go and take the bar. <laughs> so, um, and then we also have um, a nice association of other attorneys that we associate with, which specialize in different fields. Okay. So sure. for our clients who do have us retain, we are your one-stop shop. Even if we may bring on other attorneys with more special knowledge than it's we have. Within that you package. don't have to go and find out from every other attorney. Yeah. There might be additional costs depending on what is going on. Mm-hmm. But the point is you don't have to then And you also pool with someone that is also reasonable because you're trying to give the client a good, it's not like you're trying to just rope in any attorney because they need a specialization no. and something well, right no yeah. i mean first of all it's got to be someone that we trust mm. we never have them work on our client stuff if we don't trust them plus we o- we oversee their work okay um so when we do this we act as if we are your employees and we look at the work that other attorneys do for you even if we bring them on board, mm-hmm. right? Um, that's number one. I mean, I've done it where I scrutinize the bill from other law firms mm. just to make sure our client's not overpaying. Yeah. Sure, right? absolutely. Um, so we do that. I mean, basically, once you retain us, you consider us as your employee. Yeah, because and they're we, going through you. Like, right. Yeah. And we take care of, we'll, we'll manage everything. We know your business. We can coordinate with the other attorneys. You don't have to deal with 10 different attorneys if you have something huge that's going on. But, you know, all you have to do is contact us and sure. we'll make sure we keep you up to date. You need one point of contact that's right. cool wow. mm-hmm. and you guys work with not just attorneys you know cpas right yes so insurance brokers remember i said attorneys should be advisor mm-hmm. well mm-hmm. advisors and consultants yeah and you know what every business should have an advisory team mm-hmm. and that advisory team should consist of not just the attorney but um a cpa because you want to know you want to make sure your taxes are done right your decisions on, on your business and how it has a tax yeah. uh, impact. The IRS does uh, right. <laughs> you, insurance brokers are important mm-hmm. because we want to make sure you're per, you're properly protected, mm-hmm. and um, financial advisors so that you make different decisions on some of these things. Right now, what's different about what we do versus other firms is that, as your attorney, we talk to all of them, and we ask that all of them talk to each other. Because the worst thing you can have is difference. And in now opinion. let me correct. Yeah. With bringing in all those people, then though it is a larger, even to the amount when you start bringing in all those people. I'm not talking about just people you had as employment to you, but your stretch when you start bringing in insurance brokers, financial advisors, CPAs. Well, first like of you're, all, you're looking at a large group of people that are helping work on your company. Right. Exactly. And you know what the thing is that when you have a company, you have a CPA anyway. I'm not talking about a tax uh, preparer. You you should have a CPA for your business, yeah. right? Because you're going to do your you taxes. The finance, your taxes and the invoices exactly. and anything like that. The Same transactions. thing mm-hmm. like attorneys. Your CPA should not be the guy that you go to to do your taxes at the end of the year. Your CPA should be someone that you're talking to on a regular basis about different decisions in your business and how that, imp- how that will impact your taxes at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Insurance brokers, they're consultants too. Um, you know, they're not just helping you get insurance, but they should be consulting you on what insurances you need, mm-hmm. what protections you need. Financial advisors, they're already advisors. So, you know, you already know that. But the important part is it's not that we're bringing these people to you. It's that you should already have them mm-hmm. and we will work with them. Mm-hmm. Whereas other attorneys are like, we're just giving you legal advice. We're not going to interact with all the other, other advisors. Yeah. And the point is, that's not the point because we're not then looking at the entire business as a whole. Yeah. To look at the entire business as a whole, we really need to be involved with your other advisors. Um, and if you don't have them, obviously, 
we then have a great network in. that we can mm-hmm. re- refer you to. But those are people, and sometimes you may want to talk to your CPA without the attorney around. But run it through, allow your advisors to talk to each other so that they can share opinions Mm -hmm. to decide what's best for you. Because Mm -hmm. what's best legally may not be the best on the tax side, right? So they need to find a common ground where it's best for you. Mm -hmm and not best on the topic. All working towards your best. The same goal, your goal. And um, why don't we highlight just for, you know, because we are getting a little bit towards the end of the show, um, what industries you specialize? We did touch a little bit about cannabis, Mm -hmm. um, but what other ones? So as you know, I- copywriting. Right, right. so copyrights and trademarks, those are are things that are common to every industry. So we have clients in the Toy design, mm. um, so a lot of design industries, fashion design, toys. Um, we also do with a lot of manufacturers. Uh, some of our clients are, as right now with COVID being the big thing, we do have PPE manufacturers. Mm. Uh, you know, so masks, face masks, sure. and all that. Uh, yeah, but yeah. yeah, right. And then we also have clients in the restaurant. We have a number of clients that are in the uh, healthcare and personal service industries, kind of like massages for uh, oh, wow, okay. physical trainers. Uh, various things so we, we do have a, a good number of different types of clients. diverse very yeah. diverse and what we want to do is then if one client has services and products can, that can help another client okay. Ooh, bridging that gap that's, exactly that's really, really, right really good. I and mean, do you have that a lot with the clients interbridging let's say with other ones we do and having that kind of uh, relationship we do sometimes sure. some clients become investors and in other clients that's a really oh, wow. good perk yeah. that's a really so, really good perk. wow that's great yeah. i mean Hey, we all want to protect our clients, but if I can find that the businesses have synergy, mm-hmm. there's no reason not to introduce them to each other. Sure. Mm-hmm. It helps, sure. right? Sure, yeah. sure. We're business oriented. We're, you know, with a legal mind intact, but mm-hmm. we're business oriented. Oh, yeah. That's no, really that, good. That's great. Um, <laughs> any advice you'd give to uh, any starting businesses or people trying to figure out in COVID right now what kind of new methodology of, uh, of putting yourself out there? Well, obviously, we know now that uh, if you're working from home, social media and everything else is important. And even our firm is moving on to that as well. But for, for businesses, for anyone who's looking to start a business, first thing I tell you is think of at least three different names you want to use. Because, three different ones. Right. Yeah. In case the yeah. first, number one choice is not available. <laughs> right. And you also want to think about next thing is what is your business really? And where do you want to be in five years? Because mm. that will make a difference as to how we set it up at the beginning. Yeah. You know? Sure. Sure. So Absolutely. Some, some of those things you need. Just good things to think about first. Don't just go with, I want to start a business. I'm going to form my, I'm going to register my business and then just start doing business. Right. Mm-hmm. You want to think about where are you going to go with this? Yeah, you have to do the homework on it. You have to have a plan. Yeah. You have to have a plan of where am I in five years? Where am I in 10 years? How am I going to get out of this business and still yeah. make, you know, yeah. all of that stuff. So those have are things that we do. Itself. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, but then I want everyone to know that the next time when you guys tune in, we want to talk about, um, uh, insurance and insurance brokers so we're going to yeah, ask an wow. insurance broker to come wow, over and uh, cool. talk about that for sure right. absolutely because we don't know what type of insurances are available people think about just business liability insurance now, there's so much more now this is the thing too is i heard way insurance is you have to at least health insurance you have to wait until the november ish time when they have the reopening to let you apply no but i heard because of covid now they opened up all these different things, right? Yeah, so you can get insurance whenever you want, Yeah, COVID's right? one thing, yeah. But uh, honestly, for new businesses, if you're starting a new business, you can have a new policy at any time because it's a new business. As soon as sure. you can start it. Okay. As soon as sure. you open it. Um, and speaking of COVID, I want to tell everyone about this because that was something that was brought up to by our insurance advisors that a lot of businesses out there because of COVID were trying to file a claim for business loss and it's not being covered because viruses are not a covered transaction oh, that wow. cost. So oh. your business loss is not counted. Uh, wow. So your insurance is not covering that. I actually, yeah, I know somebody that, that needs to know that. Okay, yeah. However, SBA, Economic Injury Disaster Assistance, um, there's still some money left, so get on that if you haven't. Do you guys help advise a little bit, or is it not worth it? Most people could figure it out on their own. Or? Well, you know what? Um, SBA.gov, the application process is so simple. They made it so simple yeah. um, so that you should be able to pretty much navigate it yourself. It's, sure. You know, um, and it's probably not worth the money to pay a, a, a loan advisor. Mm. 
Uh, sure, so sure. I would I would go through that. And now, if you find yourself really having a problem, then obviously, if, if there's a language barrier or a cultural barrier, then yes. But if you're listening to this radio show, I bet you don't have those barriers. So just <laughs> yeah, go no, online and do sure. it yourself. <laughs> and check out uh, cntmedia.com and CNT Law Group and CNT Media on, fla- on uh, Facebook and different uh, Twitter and uh, social media. And uh, definitely... Uh, look forward to all the different topics that we have to discuss uh, with CNT Law Group and CNT Media. And yeah. uh, any shout outs? <laughs> I got you yes, now. She I does the reason why I asked. Any <laughs> shout outs out there, Cindy? Yes, of course there's shout outs. There's shout outs to my wonderful staff um, who's been working diligently from home, uh, even though we're going through this and, and totally does. Uh, we are completely, completely thankful for them being able to do all of this even during this time and um I, even though we are our office is closed everyone is still working so for clients Putting don't worry mm-hmm. you email us we'll respond to you mm-hmm. all right so don't worry about that uh, and if you are a client already please continue to reach out to us if you aren't reach out to us in <laughs> info at cntlawgroup.com let us know if you have a problem we'll try to help you out um and respond to your email either way so don't worry that we're not physically in the office (laughs) awesome thank you so much and uh, thank you cindy and we look forward to the next episode you're listening to hayes radio network cannabis lifestyle radio